Good morning, folks. It's December 1st, 2015. Uh, my name is Dan Hoquist, and uh, I am back in Marfa. Uh, I wanted to show you some new discoveries and uh, reasons for archaeologists and anthropologists to be excited. Now, this is the avatar I've been using out of Saskatchewan, a great Indian face. I'm retiring it as of today. This is going to be my new avatar. This is the matriarch figure that I found in Marfa, Texas. And uh, let me show you what it looks like when you up the color, uh, enhance the contrast, and basically uh, try to enhance the image. You can see very clearly that all the lines that I've figured are there including the bird. They use a bit of geography here to make the bird too. But this bird figure seems to be a, a uh, part of like, a, like uh, calling it a bit of imagination made real. Here's the matriarch's face. And this is how I pictured it. Same lines same images. I might be off a tad, but it's beautiful. Anyway, back to Marfa. This is one of my new discoveries. I'm calling a bird facing south, and the reason for uh, archaeologists and anthropologists to be excited about this, uh, by the way, I've contacted Texas State University and spoken with them uh, personally about this area and I am planning on making my own trip out there early next year and doing my own research. Now let me show you what it looks like without the lines. You can clearly see that this is a scooped format. It's a little different than the other images be that are made out of lines there might actually be something buried here too. Uh, it, it looks like this could be done by Indians to create this this effect by scooping both sides. And it is framed, by the way. Uh, I don't know how they did that with the uh, soil but let me take you to my other discovery here. I'm calling a seagull. Or more aptly, I should call it a crested seagull. And as you see, I'm simply following the lines. It's it's there. It it's an image. And the this one was so fun because of this ocean type panorama that they used something something you might have found in vaudeville in the early 1900s or something but this is how I picture it and it might actually come out to here but I've never seen a, a crested seagull but I, I think that might be it now let me take you around the area and show you some of the more dramatic elements of it. This is a nice hexagonal crater right here. It's all sur surrounded by the by the lines itself. And it's only when you draw back that you can actually see the hexagonal nature of it. That's also probably a burial mound there. Now, these are so out of place and so exactly similar. And look at the texturing of the soil here. This is obvi obviously something that they highlighted and it should be researched. The other mound here 
right here on the edge of the coloration. It, it's uh, it's very strange because it has a, a square nature to it. Again, out of place and highlighted. This is obviously some kind of a, a, a burial mound area. More burial mounds, structured areas. I'm taking you through the mounds that I've found so far that are just obvious to me. And, and again, a nice hexagonal crater. This is down by Terralinga. Let me show you some of the what I call structures or structured areas. Now you can you can clearly see that this has a structure to it. And the whole area should be investigated with some kind of ground penetrating radar. That's what I suggest and I will probably get a hold of uh, NASA see if they're willing to do this. Again, nature abhors rectangles. These are just it, I can't imagine what's under what's under the the, the earth. And again, structured areas. These are squares. Nice square areas with very very dramatic sharp angles. And you see some of the things that I've that I've marked as boxes. We'll get to those in a second. You can see this whole area should be investigated. Ground penetrating radar is about the only thing that's going to tell the true story of this. Again, back to more structured areas here. have anything that has rectangles and sharp angles is probably a structured area. Only because it's obvious guys that's some kind of structure. And and look at the size of this. In relation, it's it's fairly big. take you to what I call a pyramid. That's probably over there too. Right there. Look at this thing. It might have one edge sheared off, but that is most assuredly pyramidal. Especially when you regain a north-south face. Now I want to show you some of the really strange things that seem to be coloring the ground from underneath. And I'm calling this a red box. You see there's a line under here and you can see that this is the soil that's doing this. There's something underneath there like a room and these are all over the place, hidden in plain sight. Isn't that something? Now I've kind of linked, linked all of the, the red boxes together. You can see that there's a split in the middle. These are all the same dimensions. Let's get excited, archaeologists. Let's, anthropologists, tell me how Indians have something underneath the ground that can cause these rectangular s square areas to color the soil like this. Obviously, 
They are artificial in nature, or rather, not in nature. And this is going to be the last red box that I've found so far. Anything that colors, colors the earth like this has to be coming up from underground, and it's got to be some kind of metal. Now, I don't understand this. It's a multicolored rectangle or surface area in here that is somehow mosaic in the soil. Now we get to the blue boxes. Yes, there are blue boxes too. Look at this. Nice square. It's coming up from underneath. What can color the soil blue? I, I, I simply have n no idea. You can clearly see the rectangular or square nature of this. And you can see it's not a satellite malfunction. The satellite is actually picking up something underneath the ground area. There's a split in the middle. This is the last blue box that I've found so far. Isn't this dramatic? Don't you think someone should go out there and investigate this? Someone with credentials? I'm just the guy running around Texas until you call it uh, Troy. Now we get into the green boxes. Now, funny thing, there's a green box out near Coronado Island, too, underneath the water. I'll show you at some point. Coronado Island is an artificial island off of San Diego. Clearly, you can see the rectangular nature of this, and they all seem to have that split. Now we get into a, real, a little bit of weird. This is both green and red. You've got a green and a red area. And it seems to change colors at the soil mosaic. Again, look at this. Right at the soil mosaic. Somehow the satellite is picking, up, picking this up. I want to take you back to the blue box. I found uh, quite a few of these blue boxes uh, and you'll notice they're right there it's so strange to me I, I, I don't know what to make of it other than then it's there's some kind of a metallic storage area underneath the soil And somehow, the satellite is picking this up. Now, this is partial here. This is going to be the last box that I can that I can show you today. I just don't know what to make of this. I am totally uncredentialed, and but I am prepared, as a skeptic, to go where the evidence takes me, which is something that archaeologists and anthropologists seem to be uh, refusing to do. I hope that my trip out to Texas next year will supply a little bit of pl publicity for the area and possibly some protections to keep this area intact. And I sure hope that the people of the, of the Marfa, Alpine, and Fort Davis area all benefit from ad additional tourism. Thank you very much, people. Appreciate your view.